what you're seeing is a jobless recovery. You're seeing people, you know, the market doing okay here and there and, and growth over there and maybe a little bit over there, but it's not getting down to where it needs to, to go so that you as an entrepreneur will say, you know what, I'm going to hire Mark today because I need to expand my business. This is very similar to what we went through under George Bush. Yeah, that was when we got we had, the first we had a term jobless, jobless recovery. recovery. Coming out of the 2001 recession, so uh, George Bush created a lot of jobs. <laughs> if I, if I, 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 think, I think there were, I think there were jobs created in the in the eight years that George Bush was. Uh, no, well, you, we can pull sorry, up those numbers. Mistaken, well, I can pull up some numbers there was, there too. So I'll put my numbers against your numbers, and we'll see what uh, we wind up. I, I leave it to anyone out there in the audience to research that. <laughs> the Bush administration was a net so loss. How many, so how many jobs did they lose over eight years? I, I, I don't remember you the got exact that number. number. I, I, I think that I think the jobs were created. I'm almost almost. Okay. That was almost confident Republican National Committee Chairman Michael Steele on CNBC this morning with his numbers on the economy and job growth under George, under George W. Bush. And maybe this is the kind of thing where everybody has their own data set. Here's mine from that bastion of liberal economic policy, the Wall Street Journal. Jobs created under Jimmy Carter in one term, 10 and a half million. Jobs created under Ronald Reagan in two terms, 16 million. Jobs created under George H.W. Bush in just four years, two and a half million. Jobs created under Bill Clinton in eight years, 23 million. And in George W. Bush's two terms, three million jobs. Three million jobs in eight years. Woo nothing, nothing to cheer about, really. Uh, but certainly nothing to bring up and press as a point in an interview in an election year when George Bush wasn't even really part of the discussion. I mean, especially a weird thing to bring up if you are the chairman of the Republican Party. In the midst of a number of controversies surrounding Mr. Steele's tenure as Republican Party chairman, earlier this year, Karl Rove, Ed Gillespie, and some other Republican Party insiders devised a plan to raise money kind of around the RNC, at least through a different group. They announced a fundraising group called American Crossroads. Because the Democrats have a series of organizations that have allowed them to effectively carry the fight. MoveOn.org, the unions, uh, Democracy Corps, Center for American Progress. These are all organizations which have had a role and a function that we're trying to duplicate on the center right of American politics. American Crossroads set a fundraising goal for the midterm elections of $52 million. They said they would raise $52 million bucks for Republicans for the midterms. And goals are good. Public goals are good, unless you fall very, very short of them very, very publicly. American Crossroads has raised only one and a quarter million dollars since it was announced in March. Last month, they raised the princely sum of $200. Not 200-something, just $200 and some cents. Uh, but don't worry, the group says it has pledges for millions more in donations. Pledges. Joining us now is Doug Hyde, the communications director for the Republican National Committee. This is his second appearance on this show. Last time he was here, I promised to buy him a beer if Mitch McConnell actually showed up to a unity rally with Rand Paul. Senator McConnell did. And for the record, I made good on my promise. Hi, Doug. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. You did make good on the promise. I appreciate it. Hey. Um, if the, is, is the fundraising failure, at least thus far, of American Crossroads sort of a tacit endorsement of the RNC? I mean, are Republican donors rejecting an effort to make an end run around donating to the RNC? No, I don't. No, I don't think that. Well, I wouldn't characterize it as an end run. Uh, really, I'd agree with everything that, that Carl said. We need these organizations. And I'd also add uh, the American Action Network, which is run by Rob Collins, uh, which is another organization out there uh, trying to replicate what was done with Move On that was very successful with the Center for American Progress. Look, you know, we've, we're in a brave new world right now in the Republican Party. For the first time, we don't have a White House, a House or a Senate. We also don't have soft money. And when the Democrats were in that situation, frankly, they were very smart and uh, and, and set up these organizations to, to fund elections. Uh, that's what these groups are doing. Obviously, we can't work directly with them, uh, but we all have a united goal, and that's to fire Nancy Pelosi, uh, to retire Harry Reid, and we're glad that they're in this fight. And we know, you know, you look at how, how campaign funds come in, they always come in most at the end, and uh, we know that they'll be successful and uh, that they'll help us get over, get over that hurdle. If you, are, if you are psyched about them, if you don't feel that they are com competition, if you feel like you're all sort of rowing in the same direction, that $200 in one month for an organization that wants to raise $52 million by just a couple of months from now, um, I, I realize the argument that they must, might make all their money at the end, but for a Karl Rove, Ed Gillespie organization, isn't that sort of pitiful? 
Well, I think I think you need to look at what they're going to be doing in the future. And uh, if Carl Rove and Ed Gillespie are behind an operation, it's not going to be insignificant. We know they're going to be major players. And again, they're going to help us do what we re what we need to do, what our goal is, and that's to win seats in November. We're all united behind that. All right, Doug. I know as spokesperson for the RNC, uh, you had to have seen that interview with your boss, Chairman Steele, this morning on CNBC. He seemed to get a little tied up uh, with the George W. Bush jobs record, the jobs numbers. What was he trying to say something other than what he actually said there? No, look, I think I think he did talk about, you know, three million jobs were created under the Bush administration, the George W. Bush administration. Is that where we wanted them to be? No. But uh, there were jobs created, and it would be false to suggest that they're not. But again, we, you know, we look back too much, I think. We need to look forward um, and really look into the now. We, we see this president uh, always trying to blame everything on what he's inherited. Uh, it seems anything that goes wrong in this country is something that he inherited. But we were promised to create about three million jobs with the stimulus bill. We've lost 2.2 million so far. And, you know, that's not a number that just doesn't mean anything. You look at uh, a state like Nevada, uh, where unemployment's at 14 percent, despite having Harry Reid, the majority leader of the Senate there. Uh, and it's, and it's, a, it's going to be a continuing issue for, the, for uh, voters in Nevada, because you've got two industries, gaming and, and construction, that are absolutely related. I don't see how that state gets out of it until we have some kind of fiscal sanity. Doug, I think the reason, though, that George W. Bush came up in that discussion, and I can't speak for CNBC, but it seemed, what seems relevant is, I mean, we had population growth over that same eight-year period of 22 million people, 3 million jobs are created, the most anemic jobs record of any modern president of, of either party. And so I think the implicit question is, do Republicans have some other idea that they kept secret during the George W. Bush administration most of the, during most of the time which they also controlled uh, Capitol Hill? Is there some new idea? Because if, it's, if the old George W. Bush idea is what would come back if Republicans did win these next elections, um, I, I think that seems scary. Well, we want, to, we want to make sure that there's fiscal sanity. What's scary, what's scary to voters is this increasing spending, this increased debt. Uh, you talk to voters, you know, debt has always been something that voters say they're concerned about, but the intensity of their concern about it uh, uh, these days uh, is, is just tremendous. And it's part of the reason why you've seen this absolute flip uh, politically from where Republicans were a year ago to where we are now. You know, if I'm sitting in this chair a year ago, you're asking me about the Republican Party being dead, and now we're talking about how many seats we're going to win back. That's a great conversation for us. And we're talking about Carl Rove only raising $200 in a month, let's be honest. But you're right. <laughs> we had the conversation has proceeded uh, in a direction that I'm sure you're happy with. Doug High, uh, Communications Director of the Republican National Committee. Thank, Thank you. you very much hey, for joining hey, Rachel, us tonight. Yeah. Rachel, when you and I were together, would that qualify as a unit event? Um, I paid. <laughs> if we had gone Dutch, yes. So Sounds next good. Time. All right. Next time. <laughs> next time. Thanks, Doug. Feels like Christmas whenever we actually get a Republican to come on, Republican to come on the show. So thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you.